health care. That's right. Health care is the largest sector economy. 14% of people are employed there, and it's about 18% of GDP because the things they do there are a little pricey. Not only is it the largest sector of the economy, it is the fastest growing sector of the economy. Many people believe that the last big thing in health care took place in 1850. Louis Pasteur, germ theory, and basically the whole idea that when you get sick, it's little bugs that are causing the problem, right? It's not the miasma in the air. Now, to be fair, I'm, I'm kind of overstating to make a point. Uh, you know, vaccines have been pretty helpful, anesthesia pretty helpful, um, antibiotics fantastic, uh, birth control pills. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that have come along that have been terrific, but they are not, I would not describe them as platform technologies on which great waves of innovation then happen. The fuse, it was a long fuse, got lit in 1953 when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix and DNA. Aha, here is the software that controls who we are, how we grow, and how we replicate. Uh, and finally, in 2003, we sequenced the genome, genome simply being all of your genes and all the underlying DNA. The budget for that was $3 billion to sequence the first genome. Last year, you can, se you can sequence a genome for $1,000. Our understanding of the human body ha is now computational. We understand digitally what is going on. It becomes just like the semiconductor, it's free. It's approximately free. Cost as much as a band-aid, cheap. And so everyone is sequenced, everyone understands it. The whole big driver on semiconductors was Moore's Law, where the price of a semiconductor dropped in half every two years. The price of sequencing is dropping in half every six months. It's going three to four times faster than the thing that revolutionized computing. In 2012, we had a really, really fundamental, it may be the most profound scientific, certainly it's the most profound scientific breakthrough uh, of the 21st century, but certainly of my lifetime, which is CRISPR. A scientist can go in, look at all the DNA, pick out a gene that may work, may not be working, and take it out. But there are big ethical issues, right? So think about what that means, right? So now we can gene edit. And by the way, they have done in plants and animals tons of things, right? They've got a mosquito that doesn't carry malaria. They have a tomato with no seeds so that you don't need to pollinate it. They've got a goat that grows extra long hair for cashmere. They've got a pig that's super muscular like Arnold Schwarzenegger so that you get more meat. So the really interesting thing is, what are you going to do with humans? This, I think, by the way, is going to be the big ethical question of our time. I think this will be the abortion debate times 10, which is we now have with gene editing the ability not just to fix you or me or my kid, but you have the ability to shape the human germline. You can actually affect evolution. We no longer have to rely on random mutations and the normal variation that you get in reproduction to run a breeding program, either for plants or animals or, or for people, right? In other words, instead of doing that gene therapy on me, we do that gene therapy on sperms and eggs, and now we can change permanently who we are as humankind that no fundamental technology breakthrough has ever sat on the shelf for long. And it's only a matter of time before someone blinks.